Welcome back everybody for game three of XL versus Washed Up in AEF Division 2 Season 2. I'm joined once again by Kamara Nino. Welcome. Hey man, what's up? For the up? third time. For the third time this evening. Just excited. I'm actually glad we're going to a game three though. Yeah, I, just, I want to see more of uh, what we got in game one. Yeah, definitely. Game one was super intense between these two teams. Very, very close back and forth. Game two is a bit more of a, a stomp on Washed Up side that Razor did go ham sandwich. So hopefully it's a lot, uh, a lot more contested this game. Sanking getting banned out first round by XL. Is this a respect ban? Do you think that like they don't want to, they don't want to handle that Sanking again? Yeah, that Sanking did heck of a lot of work. He um, was able to one v one against the uh, the Wraith King and just kind of stop the Wraith King from being as annoying and taking over the game as you want on the Wraith King. So. He also got an extremely quick blink dagger. I don't, I don't think we picked up on that, but he had a blink dagger in an extremely remaining. quick time and was able to get a lot of key bar strikes off, a lot of good epi centers. So, yeah, I'd say it's a respect there. You know, as much as I, w I don't want to see like much of a stomp as we saw last game, I would like to see more fights like we got last game. That last one, we saw Sand King drop three epi centers before it was over. That was like probably the most drawn out team fight I've ever seen. Neither team wanted to leave. They were both just camping in there, even after the Razor died, after the Queen of Pain died, that it's like, no, nah, it doesn't matter, let's keep fighting, let's keep using our spells, and it was it was pretty good to watch, to be I, don't, fair. I don't think XL had much of a choice in the matter. But yeah, true, they were kind of camped inside <laughs> their base, they were like, get out, get out, but yeah, Avenge ban, that's Radiant interesting. Yeah, very... At, they spent a lot a, of time on that, too. It's such a specific hero to ban out. Do you think they're going for a Batrider? Batrider or Void, I'd imagine, are the two big heroes that you kind of scared off against the Vengeful Spirit. But yeah, I could see a first pick Batrider. But like, if Five seconds remaining. Um, Young Scrim's able to take over the lane instead of having to, you know, be forced into the jungle, it could be pretty hard for him to. Uh, it should be uh, pretty good for him to, you know, put a bit of an impact on the game. He didn't really get to get off his feet on that Tide Hunter, so hopefully he can have a bit more of a, um, a showing. But they pick up the clockwork this game, XL. Yeah, that's not a bad reason to get rid of the Avenge, I guess. Oh, daddy. Um, if this is the strat that I'm thinking of, this is a newbie's dirty end in 20 minute Venomancer strat. Uh, so, the recent tournament, apparition? MDL, um, it was remaining. like, it was Shadow Shaman, Venomancer, Invoker, Five seconds remaining. Um, Puck, I believe. And Ancient Apparition, yeah, were the heroes. Is and they kind of just... Time? They just dump everything on you, and you just can't team fight them, ever. And you yeah, just lose just, every fight. it's just uh, area control, really, isn't it? You've got the... the de sorry, not the Death Wards. You've got the Mass Serpent Wards and the Plague Wards as well. It really just denies you your ability to, to fight in that general area. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's like you just set up in front of a tower, and you can't defend your tower because you have Mass Serpent Wards and Plague Wards everywhere. And if you do initiate, you get Venomancer ulted, and then you get AA Blast, and then you've got Invoker stuff, and Puck stuff, and... It's just... Radiant it's just a dirty back. strat, so... I'm interested to see how XL deals with this, if... Washed Up do go towards that, um... That new B strat that I've seen, but... It's... Venomancer is just one of those heroes that's... It's so dirty. That hero is dirty. It's just... It's just AIDS. Seconds remaining. It's just, just... That hero does so much work against... Every single melee call, like remaining. Poison Sting going through BKB is annoying. He just throws down Plague Wards in the middle of a team fight, and you get hit with one, and then you can't either blink, and then you can't move. And just, yeah, just everything about Venomancer is really, really annoying. I'm glad they nerfed his, uh, his strength gain, so he isn't as tanky as he used to be. But if you put items on that little bugger, he just, he just does so much work. Yeah, like, he's something that's really frustrating about the hero that you touched on earlier. Like, his Gale, his Poison Sting, and Poison Over. None of them are purgeable by magic immunity. Yep. It's just, it's not fun to play against as a core player, so... We just need to see if they do put the Venomancer in either the mid or the carry role. I, that's what I've mainly been seeing it as lately. I don't think it's that good of a support. It's kind of... I'm kind of a big Ten advocate for... Meaning not making heroes that Five aren't support supports. Remaining. Like, Venomancer, Sansa, I'm kind of a bit iffy on those. They're, they're a bit 50-50 when it comes to being a support, whereas I feel like if they're in the core, core position, they do a lot more work than what do they do out of a support Do you prefer a Shadow position. Shaman core? 
No, no, no. I prefer the Venomancer to be the core and oh. Shadow Shaman to be the support. I, I, I'm I, really against like Venomancers and Silencers and stuff being supports because I feel like they just need too many levels, too much farm, just to be useful, you know? I, I definitely agree with you with Venomancer, and I felt that's a position he's been in for a really long time, where he's been a better core than he was a, a support, oh. despite the popularity of, of pubs and even at times the pro meta. Yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, I'll be interested to see what they do pair up with the Venomancer. He's one of those heroes that you like. You want to build more team fight around him. You can't just rely on his ulti to be the one team fight because. If the enemy team just picks a lot of disengage, you kind of just ulti and then they disengage and then re-engage when Venomous doesn't have ulti and he's kind of not that scary anymore. So you need something to either keep the heroes stunned in the middle or make it so they can't run away. So. On that note, do you think uh, XL could look for a centaur? As far as like strong disengage heroes, he has to be up there as, as one of the best. Yeah, I definitely think Centaur is probably one of the better heroes against Venomancer. If you're able to bait out his ultimate and then stampede away and, you know, kind of shrine up, come back and initiate the fight when you know that Venomancer's ulti down. Because it is a fairly long cooldown, so Five I think it's... Remaining. How big is it at level 1? Yeah, 140 seconds at level 1. So if you're able to bait that out and then come back in uh, against the Venomancer, he kind of really doesn't pose a threat to you. So I think Centaur thing... could be on the cards. The other thing they could do, and I guess it's same deal with, on the same line as the Centaur, you can initiate in as well. I mean, blinking into a Venomancer is really hard. As long as he's he's competent and he's putting those wards down, it's really hard to blink initiate on that hero and obviously those around him as well. But with the Centaur, you, you can use that to engage and you can use it to disengage as well. Yeah, definitely. So Venomancer is one of those heroes that if he gets jumped on, he's kind of screwed. Yeah, so if you're able to get a bit on... like Sniper. Yeah, definitely. So if you're able to get on top of the Venomancer early in the fights, blow him up before he uses his ulti, before he's able to throw out Gales and Plague Wards and all that other nonsense, it's kind of, you know, really hard for the uh, washed up to, you know, win a team fight. So they decide to go into the Nexus Assassin, which gives them a bit more, I want to say, scouting for the Venomancer. So Venomancer and Shadow Shaman decide to set up on a tower. You can have the Nexus Assassin on either the side or just behind the tower and... And there's there we go. the centaur. <laughs> we called it. Um, but yeah, just the Nyx Assassin to give a bit more scout and being able to let them uh, start the team fight on their terms. So being able to find where the centaur is, where the rest of um, XL is, so they're able to to get the team fight to start the way they want it. And Queen of Pain, small yeah, team, team fight, team. but I feel like the centaur is a really, really good pick. As we were saying before, uh, the stampede is just insane against Venomancer. Or stop going for another Queen of Pain. Yeah, Karipos did um, extremely well on his Queen of Pain. Um, did have a dual lane mid with him. Uh, him oh, and the Shakira were against the Kunkar, so he had a pretty good time. He he, he wasn't like extremely standout-ish, but he he did he did exactly what he needed to do. And oh, here we go, Sniper. Yeah, th this is the Andy Venomancer strat. This is yeah, Centaur Sniper. Two heroes that do not care about Venomancer. Yeah, that's. Uh, I think that's one of two ways to deal with it. Either you get a a hero with a lot of range that can that can take the wards out from a distance, um, and doesn't and isn't you know too concerned about being you know, blinked on. I mean, Queen of Pain can blink on the Dyer blink on the sniper, back. but you're going to be far enough back that your team's going to be surrounding you as well. You know, you've got those. You've got the clockwork and the centaur between you and the enemy as well. You know, hopefully, um, and the other way is to pick uh, mobility cores that don't care about. Blink daggers, Ten but I mean they've already banned those two out. You know, you got rid of the Ember, yeah. you've got rid of the Storm of Spirit. You know, there's other two ways of, of dealing Five with the Venomancer. Yeah, definitely. So I think this um, the onus is really on uh, the Nyx Assassin now. He really has to try and find and get on top of this sniper, so him and the Queen of Pain can kind of take him out. Because otherwise, he will run rampant in these fights. If um, Centaur War Runner and Clockwork are able to get into the back lines on top of the Venomancer and top of the Shadow Five Shaman, and Sniper's just you know able to throw shrapnels down and plink away like snipers love to do, so. This could be a very good uh, sniper game if uh, XL are able to protect him enough. If they don't protect the sniper, he's, he's kind of going to be like the Wraith King in the last game where Wraith King was supposed to be this frontliner, but he kind of just gets blown up. I think Washed Up are a Dragon Knight away from being completely unstoppable when they start pushing towers. Yeah, um, I could see that. I could um, definitely... Then that would have to push the Venomancer into more of a... 
support role, I'd imagine. And then yeah, like you're right. You wouldn't really run a, a a dragon knight when you've got a queen of pain. Yeah, that could be um, a very interesting strat. That'd be pretty nice. They are lacking a fair amount of magical damage. They only have um, physical damage so far. A bit from double edge and shrapnel, but it's not insane amounts. So I think dragon knight could be good, but unfortunately, I don't think their draft will let it go. So XL need their position one i'd imagine I, I don't see much position one sniper anymore Jeez, what are they gonna what are they gonna pick here like lichen could have been really good here but they banned him out 10 seconds yeah lichen would have been really good they need they definitely need something more Five to be up the front with the remain. sensor and the clockwork to let the sniper do what their stuff in the back there we go the bristleback, bristleback. radiant team the bristleback's that hero he kind of doesn't really care about Venomancer. Like, he does get carded extremely well by the, the Gale and Plague Wards, but he doesn't really care about the ulti that much. So this Bristleback is pretty much going to be standing on the front saying, Ten come on, guys. So remaining. come on, guys. Go on me. I'm the big Bristleback. And then Clockwork's going to counter-initiate and Sensor Warround's going to have the Stampede to try and save them. So pretty... A very nice draft coming out from Exile. Exactly. They really did well dealing with the Venomancer. So washed up kind of needs to round it out with a position one right now um there is a, a lack of lockdown coming out from xl so maybe something like an anti-mage could be good for wa washed up if they don't put the venomancer as their position one so it's, uh, it's kind of open right now i even thought that xl could have gotten the anti-mage for themselves yeah anti-mage is i don't i don't know how i like him against venomancer um, to be honest, it's, it's kind of one of those things where, like, if you get altered as an anti mage, you kind of don't want to fight it anymore. So, it was it's a bit a bit of an iffy pick, but they do pick up a gyrocopter here. So, we're gonna have a support Nyx assassin and an offlane venomancer, and a position one gyrocopter. This is interesting from washed up. Um, gyro like team washed up. They want to fight early and they want to end the game early. They want to get, they want to be as fine as possible at 30 minutes. Kind of try and push these high grounds, win these team fights with a gyrocopter and the venomancer, and kind of just set up on these towers. Pretty much set a battlefield, and then as soon as they start to initiate, gyrocopter and queen of pain can drop all their spells. So, who are you picking for this? I'm, I kind of like Excel's. I have to go with washed up. I think. Five seconds. All right, we're gonna we're gonna be split fifty there's just, fifty. There's just so much uh, area denial here, like with the gyrocopter now as well, with the with that cooldown. Like if yeah. they want your tower, I, I I just don't see how you take it, how how you stop that. That's true. I just feel like the gyrocopter Nick Shadow Shaman lane is fairly weak to Clockwork Centaur, like. If the Shadow Shaman is slightly misstepped, he gets killed by a Clockwork and a Centaur. The, the Gyrocopter is very susceptible to that gank as well. See, He's I think this a, is a support Venom. Maybe this could be a support Venomancer. But I think that's just worse, right? I think a support Venomancer is a lot worse because Nyx Assassin does have his Spike Carapace to try and push away a, a bit of that damage. And Venomancer kind of just throws out wards, I guess, against these heroes. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see how they how they pan it out. But I, I feel like Excel's has got the better draft here. I think it's really hard for them to deal with the sniper um, unless the Nyx assassin is able to be on top of him all the time. So we're both wrong. It's a jungle venomancer. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> he's got he's got the iron talent and the tangos. He's go. He hasn't skilled up the plague ward yet, but suck on these, making us look like fools, man. So jungle venomancer. I'm mean, interested to see if he's gonna go to the ancients. Is, is that how you do it these days? You... Going for the Ooh, smoke wrap around. Oh, oh and gyrocopter. So he's out of. He's not in the right position to catch this one out. So Here dead. comes with the lift. They're gonna pick him up, pull him back. Stomp connects. <laughs> Battery assault, and that's the easiest kill you've ever gotten in your life. Yeah, gyrocopter is very very weak level one. He's um rocket barrage being. Nerfed into the ground consistently, only does 7 damage per rocket. And um, he's really low HP as well. But he has respawned quick enough that they could potentially try and contest this if they wanted to. But I don't think they're going to, so... They're just going to respect the uh, that rune fight potential at level 1 from XL, I think. 
Yeah, and this is a absolutely scary dual lane. The the Clockwork Centaur is going to um, prove a lot of troubles for this team if the Clockwork does decide to stay down here. He has Boots first and Battery Assault, so it's a pretty scary Clockwork if he decides to stay down bottom and looks so like he's going to head towards the mid lane. Yeah, and Gyrocopter, he's only got he's only got a set of Tango. He's in a Wraith Band. Yeah, the, they can they can punish this Jungle Venom super hard if they put the Clockwork bottom with the Centaur and just force the Shadow Shaman to pretty much be as passive as possible because if Shadow Shaman gets caught out by a battery assault, he, he's just dead. But they are starting to make their way. Top Clockwork is heading his way there. He's spotted out by a ward though, so... Can't really get much on top of Dark Destro Nova. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Young Scrim though. He is taking a bit of a, a bit of a beating here from the Shadow Shaman. 74 damage. Absolutely no items. It's Number ridiculous. One. What the hell is it's that? It's ridiculous, isn't it? That's that's insane. That, that Centaur did not expect that. I didn't expect that. Birdie coming in here with the right clicks and the aftershocks. As Still far as uh, his ability to zone goes, do you remember uh, early early Oracle where his... I, I'm not even going to pretend I can remember the name of those abilities. His but His, edict, his W, whatever his yeah. W was, used to amplify uh, physical damage. Physical damage, yeah, and he used to just zone the offlane. Yeah, and you yeah. just you just pop it on them and then just run at them. It, 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 Shadow Shum reminds me a lot of that and just his ability to just dominate offlaners. And it looks yep. like he might actually go down here. Yeah, he does. And Jarocopter getting a little bit of revenge for that level 1 gank that he had to endure early on. Yeah, the Shadow Shaman right clicks still a lot of work. And he, he was just spamming Aftershocks on him too, so... I really think it's a, a bit of a misplay from XL. I don't think the Clockwork should be trying to soak off the Venomancer. I think he should just be putting a lot of pressure on the Shadow Shaman. Because without the Clockwork there, like, if the Clockwork was bottom, Shadow Shaman doesn't have such free of a time to, you know, throw out right clicks and Aftershocks on Young Scrim, because he'll just lose the trade. And it looks like he's going to get extremely low again. Oh my god, Young Scrim. Yeah, this is not fun. This is not what you want. This clockwork isn't really doing much either. Not level 2 yet. Venomancer. Where is the Venom? Oh, yeah, the jungle now. Oh, the other side of the jungle. So Yeah, he got zoned out by the clockwork. This clock is zoning out Venom, but Venom is still farming at the same time. So I just, I just feel like the clockwork needs to go bottom to put a lot of pressure on the Shadow Shaman. Otherwise, Shadow Shaman's just going to keep killing Centaur, but Centaur's decided to go into the jungle right now. I mean, he, he can't gank, a, he can't gank a, a Queen of Pain either. Yeah. Looks like this Clockwork might not be working out for the boys of XL. Looks like he's looking for a courier. He's, he's in position for a courier snipe, but I don't think Queen of Pain's getting a bottle. No, she's not. She's a little bit of gold away from getting her bottle. Yeah, so. Shadow Shaman has enough to upgrade the courier to flying in a couple of seconds, so... Yeah, there we go. It's flying. I don't think he's going to kill it now. He does have boots, though, so... Like, at, sure at three minutes, like, there's no point trying to gank a courier anymore. Well, oh, Shadow Shaman has DC'd. But, um... Dark Destronova is getting going on top. He has Carapace. Yeah, he's got the Carapace, he's got the Impale, and he's so close to his tower, I, I don't think he dies here. Yeah, I don't think he dies either. He has three stick charges and only one stack of cools on him, so... I think he should be fine, but I really think, um... This Clockwork needs to start getting stuff done. He, he needs to... Either pressure the Veno, who currently has no mana, or get a kill somewhere. I think we'll let the Centaur get full HP, him come bottom, and kind of just run at this um, Shadow Shaman. Because he only has Shackles and Aethershock, so he's a pretty easy kill. And they have just drawn on the map where the Clockwork is, so... Yeah, they, they, know, they know he's about. Dr. Shinova Ooh, has he's used in, he's, his... He's um... a single... Yeah, oh, single nice. quill spray away. I, you know, we called it. We didn't think that they were going to get that kill, but big yeah, red, big red now in trouble. Here comes the shadow, sh big boy shadow shaman. They don't know that the clockwork's here though. Could this oh, turn Nix around? Nix is coming back in. Out of here. This is not good. Big red is running a bit low on mana and a bit low on HP as well. Venomancer coming in. Oh, he pops the mango. He's ready to fight. Oh no. That was um, pretty bad that the Clockwork's uh, not going to be able to pick up anything in return here either. Oh no. He might be able to escape. He's got the cop. Oh, <laughs> poor, poor Nyx. Cops it twice. Yeah. 
The um, unfortunately, when he uh, Big Red used his cool spray, uh, Nyx did have his spike carapace up, so he was stunned. He got hit by the impale and went down. A bit unfortunate. Did cause rotations though, so maybe some talking it a bit. Yeah, more, uh, Young Scrim making the most of this space now. Up to level three, he's managed to secure himself two last hits. Count them: one, two. But <laughs> he's getting zoned out by the gyrocopter though. But I think he's just happy to get whatever he can right now. Do you think he should yeah, be going definitely. for? Oh, he could find himself in trouble here if the uh, rocket barge gets popped. He, he's gonna run back into the creeps, but he still cops enough damage from the rocket barge, enough that the uh, right click from gyrocopter seals the deal. Yeah, level five gyrocopter against a level three uh, centaur. He has two levels in return as well, but that doesn't matter if you have rocket barrage going. And the creep wave was um, low enough that he was able to kind of just burst it down and. Another kill to the gyrocopter, so it looks like this gyrocopter is going to have a pretty fun time. I'd be interested to see where he goes. Um, usually the build that I see is probably the Santiago drum, somewhere around those lines. And Ags has been quite popular too. Ags Maelstrom is a very nice build that I've seen a lot. Um, some of the Mogi from Newbie, I believe, is the guy who plays gyrocopter with Mask of Madness. Which is a pretty interesting way to play. I haven't um, tried it myself. So I feel like oh, it'd be a bit finicky. to die to neutrals? 20 HP. He <laughs> get very close. He, he is. He's definitely push it. He's trying to get towards that. Um. No, it doesn't look like he's gonna go for an Iron Talon, but he's having a hard time. This is probably one of the hardest offlines he's had in a long time. If you have a look at the levels on the supports at the moment, like, well, I guess everyone. Excel just losing every lane right now, like, both in net worth and in XP. Yeah, and washed up have a jungle Venomancer and. They're winning all their lanes. So it's it's pretty much the perfect way that you want um, the way to go with the jungler. So then uh, I just going to go into Midas. Oh, uh, they've they've rotated it all down into the bottom lane now as well. But he's up against a level six gyrocopter. Yeah, he could he could go down if he's not careful. Like if um, gyrocopter looks at him, he dies. He's, yes. I don't, he's not going for last hits. He's just trying to soak experience. I think. Yeah, he's so far behind right now. Shasham is going to come in with those big dirty right clicks. I don't think they're going to do anything there. I have put three heroes in this bot lane though. Clockwork getting really aggressive. Call down gets dropped. And the shackle. Oh, just, a, just annihilated. Yeah, Centaur now in trouble. Trying to get away. Right clicks from, from Gyrocopter. Manages to secure the kill. And Rubik. Yeah. yeah. Rubik Dominating a little pervert Gyrocopter. watching from the trees. Peeping Rubik. <laughs> right. Little, little, little voyeur. 4, 1, and 0 on this gyrocopter at 7 minutes. This is uh, looking pretty bad. Gyrocopter is one 40... of those heroes that loves being super aggressive. And he's 43 and 26. Yeah, he, he's doing extremely well in this whole, in this uh, safe lane. Uh, yeah, he can pretty much go wherever he wants right now. I was about to say, do you go lanes. first item Ags and really just enhance that farm that you're getting? He could if he wanted to, if he feels like this game might go a bit later, or he could go a bit more of an early game build and, you know, maybe get a drums, maybe get something like that and wait for the Venomancer to come online and just push towers. So it really is up to him what he decides to go for right now. He has 1,400 gold, so Dragonlance, Maelstrom, Ags, drums, you know, whatever his team feels like he needs to have. Because Venomancer has gone for a Midas as well, so maybe planning a bit, bit later on into the game. He also hasn't picked up a point in the Poison Nova, opting for three in Poison Sting and three in the Plague Ward, so you know, he has absolutely no interest in leaving the jungle anytime soon. But... Like Dark Destiny Nova is getting gone on top. As four cool stacks on him as well. Three right now, he's just trying to wait for that Spike Carapace to run out, and bam, another right click from Big Red. That was a nice kill from him. Oh, Clockwork. Down bottom, he's in position here to find the Venomancer. He has so many Plague Wards up, there's no way he's going to kill that. He was up behind him earlier. If he'd uh, just walked a little bit further north, he would have seen him. I don't think he had any idea that he was there. Yeah, probably didn't want to risk it walking up in the shrine. He's eight minutes, so could potentially still be up. It looks like Queen of Pain is going on on the sniper in mid. Damn, son. DD Queen. Yeah, it's, it's pretty hard to see um, XL losing all these lanes, especially when they're not putting any pressure on the Venomancer, so... The um, Bristleback is doing well though, so this could be their one saving grace. But I don't think he has the ability to carry games like the Morphling did in game one. Yeah, 
that's understandable. I feel like he's pretty much just gonna try and be this massive damage sponge that's gonna sit in the front, try and tank all the gyrocopter stuff, and pretty much just let his sniper come back by winning some team fights and surviving. Even if the bristleback goes down, if the sniper's able to get a kill or two, and you know, just be more annoying, get his maelstrom up, get his dragon lance, and just sit from the back and plink. Uh, I think Bristleback's done his job because the sniper is pretty much their position one in this game, right? Yeah. Do you think that XL could have tri lane this? Uh, think they could have aggro tri lane into the gyrocopter. But I feel like if they did that, they didn't really know where the Venner was going to go, and if the Venner comes up, but it looks like we do have a team fight going on bottom. Yeah, Rubik going down. They're looking for the Centaur now, and Shadow Shaman catching that Rubik. So clockwork out and 3-0 for a total score of 9 and 3 and a, uh, about a thousand gold swing. This gyrocopter dude. He's he in life right now. Insane. He has. Oh, he's gonna go straight for a hurricane pike. All right, I like this. They have a clockwork. So he's gonna go straight for a hurricane pike. The drop. Yeah, you don't really kill him. him. Yeah. So looks like Veno decided to. Just, he's just gonna farm. He's, he doesn't need to be on the yeah. lane, so he's just going to keep farming, and they're going to have to deal with him when he comes out with his Midas. I don't think he's going to maybe go, he might go straight for Ags or something like that. Who knows? Yeah, really, they're losing four v five at the moment. Pretty much, they didn't lose that top, that bot tower, and they have rotated the Bissell back in, so maybe trying to get a fight. But cooldown is ready one more time. Nix is going to scout out the Bristleback. back. They drop a ward, so they know that he's on top of him. Nix getting trapped in the cogs, but who's trapped in with who as the call down comes out and... Oh my god, Gyrocopter, he's just chunking people down. Bristleback's looking for something, anything. But he gets shackled up now as well. In comes the Sniper with the Long Range Assassinate, manages to pick up a kill. Shadow Shaman trying to TP out and it looks like he's going to be able to escape. And Gyrocopter just sitting around in the trees. So XL finally picking up something, a little bit of respite. Yeah, um, that was pretty scary for them. Sniper, um, fortunately, was the one that got that kill, so he's getting a bit of gold in his pocket right now. But in saying that, there was no Venomancer, no Queen of Pain, and they still did get two kills. So this Gyrocopter is extremely fat right now. Eight, one, and one on him. So he is getting extremely close to that Hurricane Pike. And I think once he gets that, this Clockwork is, you know, kind of just doesn't want to go anywhere near Gyrocopter or probably wants to hook onto the Shadow Shaman or the um, Venomancer. But. Just makes his game 10 times harder with a 4 stuff that comes out this early. Like, it's just, as a clockwork, you want to try and get as many kills before people start building 4 stars. But if position 1 is able to get their Hurricane Pike slash 4 stuff before you even have Blade Mail or not even your level 6 at this point, it just, it just really stops the way that you can play um, clockwork. And can I just point out the, the level disparity here on the heroes? The offlaner and the two supports for XL are 6, 5, and 5. Versus the 10, 7, and 7 of Washed Up. Like, this is a huge experience gap at the moment. And this early in the game, this is, this is just absolutely crippling. Yeah, it's not looking good for them. Not having a level 6s on Rubik and Clock is pretty is pretty bad for them. Because uh, Rubik Spell Steel is amazingly good against Radiant's a lot of these heroes. Tower. And Sounds without attack. Hookshot, but looks like they're going to go on Big Red Top. They don't know that the Nyx Assassin is here. Manages to get the Vendetta auto attack, follow up with the stun, Queen of Pain immediately committing the Sonic Wave, but thank Christ, Centaur got his level 6 and he's able to get that bristle back right the hell out of there. Yeah, they're gonna commit uh, the wards, and I don't think Excel are gonna want to fight into this. Yeah, no, it doesn't look like they're gonna go for it either, but this, I just want to point out the Venomous is going for a Maelstrom. I don't think that would be the build, but. It's like they're deciding to just put. Um, oh, they've brought the Nyx back into the cogs and the battery assault. He's trying to get out, but in comes the Central War Runner dropping the stun and the double edge. So he picks up the kill for himself. That's why he's actually yeah. Donor that managed to pick it up. Uh, that, was, that was a good return kill. Um, Donor picked that up. They don't lose their T1 as well, but Venomance is just pushing mid. Has his Maelstrom coming out now, so it looks like he's going to be transitioning more into a right click Venomancer instead of like a. Magic damage Venomancer. And Gyrocopter's getting gone on bot. Why Bristleback, but... Uh, do either of these really kill each other here? I think maybe as a, you know, war of attrition, I think this Bristleback 
may end up going down. Starcaster does have a lot of damage. He's running a bit low on mana. Yeah, that's like stun, that. and then... Well, Nixie didn't even get to get the right click out. I think Bristleback just hung around too long there, maybe overestimating his tankiness. Yeah, I think he copped a bit too much of those uh, level 4 rocket brushes to the front of himself. Wasn't able to turn around and uh, get rid of a lot of that damage. And yeah, just level 12 and this much farm on a gyrocopter. It's, it's and in so the meantime, hard. Queen of Pain on the top lane. She's found herself the <laughs> clockwork, but is he going to be able to get out? Yeah, instant TP and understanding that there is no lockdown from Queen of Pain. You're nothing tying him to that, that particular place. He's going to get the fuck out. Yeah, so Queen of Pain has uh, picked up a blade mail for herself as well, so... Pretty interesting uh, idea against a sniper. You pretty much just jump in and blade mail, and the sniper can't turn around on you at all. Has to run away 100% of the time, unless there is uh, like I don't know, like a Rubik lift or something standing behind him. So she's pretty much just going to be a poor man's pistol back. She's going to jump in and pop a blade mail and be like, "Hello guys, hit me, hit me!" And while Gyrocopter pops his stuff on the back line, so exactly like your favorite Wraith King build. Yeah, favorite Wraith King build, which unfortunately didn't get uh, built. But oh, Sniper's is gonna get Ilgabot. found. She's on him, gets the Vendetta. Instant. Instant. Sam Peter looks like it might have been something else, but very coincidental. They have found Gyrocopter in the bot lane, trying to run him down now. But he is very quick. They've found the Sniper. He's gonna be able to zone himself out with the stolen... <laughs> stolen Brocket Barrage, running down this... Shadow Shaman. He's trying to chuck out in the trees. He's... Wasting a bit of time, but they do manage to pick up the kill eventually. Yeah, that was that was not good. Gyrocopter lived on a very small sliver of HP. Unfortunately, they didn't have any more shrapnel charges to find him in the trees, so... <laughs> was able to force stuff and get out. Solo killed uh, Bristleback as well, top lane. Yeah, that's not good. Um, Gyrocopter surviving, Queen of Pain getting a kill top. It's just getting worse and worse, and Gyrocopter's Dyer's getting out straight into a butterfly. I was just going to point that out, the point that out, but you've taken the words out of my mouth. It's gonna be a monster. This, this, this is a very smart idea. Um, if you're able to get an item like Butterfly or Heart on these types of heroes, where the enemy team pretty much doesn't have enough damage to kill you as it is, and if you take away their ability to hit you with a Butterfly, I looks like uh, Dark Testanova gets going on, but turns it around. We're stuck on these. Quick and, pain yeah, going in onto the Rubik. Now on the one trying to juke into the trees. So he's going to come out. Single right click secures the kill for her. <laughs> yeah, as I was saying, if, if you're like really hard to be brought down before the butterfly comes out, imagine how impossible he's going to be, like how hard it is for them to kill him with a butterfly up. And also gives him a lot of attack damage too. So tier three coming in for the boys of Washed Up. And Venomanta finally the turning up for a fight. Yeah, Venom's here, boys. Might use his first ulti. Shadow Shaman did drop his ward, but they are only level 1, so they're not that strong right now, but this could be a tier 3 at 16 minutes in the game. Oh, this Veto is so dirty. Big Red doing his best to zone him out, and the tower does 4. Are they going to be comfortable with this, or are they going to look for more here? They're probably just going to try and get a bit more chip damage on a tier 3, hopefully trying to force a fight here. I don't think uh, the boys of XL want to fight this at all. So they will potentially get Hook the shot in onto here. the Queen of Pain. Not going to get it, and he's going to go down instantly. They're looking for more. They've got this gyrocopter that starts himself onto the back lines. Venomancer ult whiff doesn't get anyone because they're already dead. Bristleback. Doing the best he can, but I mean, what can you really do? He gets stunned up, and I think he's going to go down here now as well. And do you just call GG here? You just got wiped in your base at 17 minutes. They yeah, call it. That's it. Yeah, that was uh, a very good draft from the boys of Washed Up. Unfortunately, Axel didn't really punish it that hard. Clockwork kind of had the right idea. Um, wanted to put a bit of pressure on the Venomancer, but Centaur just going down those three times in bot lane and just top didn't really go that well. Mid went kind of even. And it's, it's just unfortunate that Clock didn't really get his role on. Yeah, the le he, no one just got enough levels to be able to do to do anything. Centaur was completely zoned out. Clock was completely ineffectual. They won. They won this game almost four v five. Like if you take yeah. Venomancer completely out of that game, it almost wouldn't. I don't feel it would go really much different. Yeah, definitely. Venomancer was just stuck in that jungle. Went into a Midas. Went into a Maelstrom and Dragonlance of all things. I think he could have built anything and it would have been fine. And 
Bristleback did get a, um, a fair bit of farm, but unfortunately he wasn't tanky enough to deal with these heroes, and they had a fair amount of kite and won a lot of stuns as well. And, yeah, they just couldn't get their uh, their draft rolling for XL, and it looks like washed up, pick it up 2-1. And if I can just point out, this is actually the first series in Division 2 that's made it to three games. Every other game has been a 2-0. Really, every other... Because I know all the ones that I've casted have been 2-0s. I, I wasn't quite sure if everybody else's, but wow, this is the first 2-1. That's it. First 2-1. So uh, thanks again, everyone, for joining us. And thanks, uh, Chimera Nia. It's been fantastic to cast with you. Uh, I'm sure that uh, we'll be casting again in the not-too-distant future. Yeah, definitely, dude. It's been my pleasure. And uh, thanks, for everyone, for tuning in. We'll catch you next time.